So we, we had a really great conversation about Web3 infrastructure earlier, and um, I'm going to dive a little bit more into that today. And I think one of the things that, you know, as we talk about Web3 infrastructure and, you know, we're sharing our insights and sharing our experiences, it's really important to just keep an open mind and to remember that we're all still trying to figure this out, right? The, the, the blockchain developers, the game developers, most of us feel like we have a lot of answers. And you know, certainly if this is not your first cycle, you've seen a lot of things. But I'd be willing to bet that the games that actually end up defining the blockchain space are going to look super different. So something for us to keep in mind. Um, to reintroduce myself, my name is Garrison Yang. I'm the VP of growth at Ava Labs. I manage strategy, marketing, uh, cross gaming, and a number of our other verticals as well. So when I was younger, um, I was a professional gamer, and I actually really wanted to build games. I was uh, you know, creating those crazy maps in Warcraft 3, and I thought, you know what? This is, this is going to be my career. I'm going I'm to work in gaming. I'm going to build games. And as I got older, I realized that this shit is really hard. It's super hard. You know, like you think about a traditional gaming stack, you need, uh, you need your game launcher, you need your game engine, you need databases, you need servers, maybe servers that manage users, some more servers that manage more data, and gosh, maybe you need servers for your games too, right? And so it's, it's super difficult already for a traditional Web2 uh, web developer to build a game. There's a lot of choices to make. And then you add in Web3 and it's like, hey, here's 50 wallets, right? Which, which wallet are you picking? And, uh, and how about you pick a chain? There's like a million chains out there. Who are you going with? And uh, hey, you also need nodes. Uh, you need validators. And you know, why don't you have some more wallets, right? There's tons to pick from. And I, I think it's kind of wild because we've taken something that really should not be a huge friction point in development, and we've made it this enormous topic of conversation, right? Like, as, as game developers, you guys have a lot to think about, and spending a ton of time thinking about how you're going to incorporate blockchain is really taking away from the thing that your consumers really want to interact with. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, this chain thing, right? Like, I, I do work for Avalanche, and so, you know, we've got, we've got a horse in this race. Um, and I think the question that a lot of people ask is, should I pick a chain or should I build a chain, right? Do I want to build on someone else's chain or do I want my own chain? That's a really tough question. There's also a third option, which is we're seeing a rise, and shout out to my friends at Beam. We're also seeing a rise of maybe not application specific chains, but chains that are tailor made for certain use cases. And, and I think it's really interesting in gaming, um, the folks at, at IMX sort of pioneered this, right? where you are building a chain that is tailored for a certain subset of developers. And Beam does a really good job of this, right? They're an example where they're, they have their own chain and they've built tooling on top of that chain to serve game developers. And so if you're, if you're a certain type of game and you've decided that you don't need to build your own chain and you've decided that, hey, maybe you know, the public C chain or maybe building on another public blockchain is not right for you, you can build on something like Beam. So let's really quickly talk a bit about the pros and cons of each, right? Building on a public blockchain uh, makes things easier, right? If you build on someone else's chain, you have faster time to market, way less decisions, can be a lot more cost efficient, right? And there's less to think about. As a developer, if you're building a certain type of game, this might be a really good idea. And, you know, I've included a couple games that are building an Avalanche. Star Atlas is obviously on Solana, right? These are all games that have decided, for whatever reason, right, that they want to build on a chain that other projects and other games are building on. What are the negatives? Well, less flexibility, right? You're subject to rules and decisions that other people have made, things like gas fees, gas curves. You're subject to network congestion. And so there are pros and cons of building on someone else's chain. It's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing, it's a decision. What about building your own chain, right? Shrapnel, Blitz, Godzilla, a couple names that I can't share today. These are games that have decided to build their own chain. Bespoke, it's customizable, you can do whatever you want with it, you can define validator sets, you can define your own gas economics. Those are really good things. 
What are the negatives? More decisions, right? As a developer, you already are making a ton of decisions. We just showed you all these different things you have to think about. Now, when you're building your own chain, you have to define a lot of these rules. It can be challenging. It can also be more cost efficient. It can also be more expensive, right? Because you're operating your own chain. And I think if you're a game developer today and you're thinking about whether or not you want to build your own chain and whether or not you want to build on someone else's chain, at the end of the day, what you need to think about is whether or not your decision is adding value right, for your project or if you're just adding a lot of blockchain. right? Ultimately, blockchains are going to become a commodity, no doubt. Avalanche is in the business of delivering blockchains as efficiently and as quickly and as easily as possible. But the truth is that there are a lot of different ways that you can build on chain, right? Saga is a really great solution. The folks from Polygon, IMX were up on stage earlier. They've got really great solutions. You're going to see a lot more blockchain solutions pop up. And it's going to be really, really easy to launch blockchains, right? At Avalanche, right, we've got a product called Iva Cloud. Our tagline is blockchain simplified. Our goal is to deliver blockchains as easily and as simply as possible. So if you are a game developer, the blockchain component is actually a thing that you should worry the least about. And earlier today, I was talking a bit about where there is space for innovation. And if there are any developers out in the crowd or people who are watching, the thing that I would challenge you guys to think about is not how we can build another blockchain, but what tooling is missing, right? As, as Web3 native developers, as infrastructure player, most of us don't really understand all the tooling that game developers need, right? We're really good at building blockchains, but we're not really good at building things like tools for DevOps, tools for live ops, measurement tools, marketing tools, user management tools, telemetry, right? These are all the things that are still missing to connect blockchain with game developers. And where we see and where I see value being created in this space, right, and where there's a ton of opportunity is not launching another layer one, right? We, we, we probably don't need uh, too many more people just building general purpose blockchains. What we need are all the people in this room thinking about all this stuff. How do you add better compliance tooling, right, for game developers? How are we thinking about interoperability with Web2 tools, right? What about the MarTech, the DevOps, the analytics, the LiveOps? I, we, we talk to a ton of games that are building in Web3, and there's none of this. They're either cobbling together Web2 tools, or they're just saying, you know what? We're not going to have DevOps. We're not going to have telemetry, right? We're just going to run this thing on Firebase and see what kind of analytics we can pull out. And so. As we're thinking about the future of our space, right, and as we're thinking about how we can better serve game developers, these are the things that I want us to be thinking about. There's a lot of people competing right now in the blockchain space, and there's a lot of white space for people to be building solutions to address these problems, right? And so I'll sort of leave you with you know, these very familiar logos, right? These are tools that you know, if you're building a game or if you're, you know, running a company today, traditional Web2 companies are very familiar logos. Where are all of these in Web3? Who's the Web3 CDP, right? I can manage customer data across Facebook, TikTok, my website, my app, but I don't know anything about my users on Web3. I've got tooling like Amplitude where I can you know, measure what's going on in my product, but it doesn't connect with on-chain data, right? I can connect a million apps through Zapier, but there's no Web3 automation. Like I can't, I can't execute a smart contract when an, an email gets sent to a user, right? So we're missing a lot of these things that I think is going to take us to that next stage of usability in Web3 gaming. And for all the builders you know, in the room today and all the builders who are gonna be talking to, to other people throughout this day, I hope that you guys have some of these conversations and push each other to think about these things because we want to grow that pie, right? We want to grow the user base. We want to grow the developer base. But we also want to grow the pie of the things that we're investing in. There's a lot of smart people in this room. We can spend some time not chasing the same problems, right? I'm going to keep it short today. Really great to have you guys. Thank you to the Saga team for having me and for having everyone else. Um, if you want to chat with me, I'll be upstairs. But I invite you to build with us. Thank you.